Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, March the 17th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. There's a look at the Skycam imagery from Fayette this morning. Just a lovely shot of the courthouse over there. And then I couldn't help but enjoy this shot of the city of Mobile as we look out from the battleship Alabama. We still continue to have a frontal system lying across the Ohio River Valley, producing a good deal of rain across that area. In the upper atmosphere, we now have a bit of a little trough moving across the northwest Gulf of Mexico. That'll be responsible for some clouds along the southern counties and into the Gulf of Mexico and perhaps even some rain in the Gulf. But we're really waiting for that next system now coming into the northwest corner of the U.S. Looks like uh, temperatures remain fairly warm, kind of Kind of a pretty good boundary there along along that uh, boundary in the Ohio River Valley. You'll notice it's uh, like about 60 at Nashville, but it's 28 at Chicago. So kind of a good gradient across there. Not much of a gradient across central Alabama, though, as most places are in the 50s. I do notice that Gadsden and Fort Payne are in the 40s, so a little bit cooler up there. Also notice all the fog that is down over the southeast sections, and that has prompted a dense fog advisory till about 9 a.m. There's a look at the rain on the, the regional radar look. Got some showers in the Gulf, plus we've got those showers along that frontal boundary. Looks like uh, the number of watches and warnings has increased a bit over the last uh, 24 hours. Our map was rather empty yesterday. Most of those colors up there, the purples and pinks to the north, are related to winter weather. And then the large area of reddish pink over New Mexico has to do with fire weather and uh, uh, red flag warnings. QPF-wise, we're looking at on the order of uh, perhaps one to maybe as much as two inches over the next five days. And uh, part of that comes, of course, into Thursday uh, with the next weather system. Storm Prediction Center is out looking a slight chance for severe storms today from about Shreveport uh, to Dyersburg, uh, including places like, uh, looks like it just barely gets to Little Rock and uh, Memphis. But day two is the one we're really concerned about as we see the slight risk area expanded from what we saw yesterday, including about the northern two-thirds of the state of Alabama, including places like Muscle Shoals, Huntsville, uh, Anniston, uh, Birmingham, Gadsden, Tuscaloosa, uh, extending from about Meridian and Jackson all the way up into eastern Kentucky in the vicinity of Jackson. All right, let's take a look at modeling, uh, and we've got a lot to talk about here. Uh, there's the surface projection for today and, of course, the frontal boundary to our north. But we also see the clouds and the rain in the northern Gulf of Mexico from that little disturbance. Of course, uh, the, the big thing is that our disturbance that is currently in the northwestern United States moves into the north central part of the United States as it comes into Minnesota. And it goes negatively tilted. Now, we've been talking already, and uh, James mentioned this on Friday, that uh, you know the major dynamics are pretty far north, and indeed they are. Uh, however, the GFS began noting, uh, I noted yesterday, a double-barrel low situation, and we still have that, the main and deepest surface low up uh, in the vicinity of the western tip of the Lake Superior area. But we do have a secondary low that is in the Ohio River Valley with a trailing cold front uh, down across uh, Tennessee, and uh, at this time, Monday midday, around 1 p.m., we have the front extending down into Mississippi. Now, if we uh, move out to uh, 0 Z, that'll be 7 p.m., you can see the front is moving through Alabama. So it looks like the primary threat for severe storms are going to come from about, say, 2 p.m. or so to maybe around you know, 8, 9, 10 p.m., something like that. And let's look at uh, some of the parameters. Well, this is one of those uh, high instability values, but low shear uh, situations. So there's a look at the CAPE off the GFS. This is at 18Z, 1 p.m., and you can see uh, the CAPE value is really approaching. At that same time, though, it's interesting to note on the model sounding that there is an inversion between about 850 and 700. At inversion, yes, that would help to suppress any convection. However, the inversion is not that strong, so it is likely to be broken. By 
Zero Z, uh, Cape values have uh, come up across much of Alabama and into Georgia. And so, uh, again, we have relatively good instability. And uh, then the instability or the atmosphere stabilizes after that. So by midnight, it looks like any threat for severe storms is pretty much over. But it's the shear values that are low. So this is a low shear but uh, high instability uh, situation, or at least higher instability situation. There's a look at... The shear values for helicity off the NAM at uh, 18Z, 1 p.m., and of course you can see the values are pretty low. And even when we get to uh, 0Z, uh, the values come up a little bit, but still they are uh, fairly low. So it looks like the big threat is going to be that of straight line damaging wind as well as per, uh, potentially large hail. That negatively tilted uh, trough moves uh, through or through the Great Lakes on Tuesday, and so we should see improving weather as the surface high pressure settles in and we cool down. Uh, we're not going to turn much colder on Tuesday, but we will drop from mid-70s down into the mid-60 range. But the real cool down will come as the northwesterly flow develops even better on Wednesday and into Thursday. And you can see the 540 line sitting along the uh, uh, Alabama-Tennessee line, so it does look like uh, there is a potential for some 30 values on Wednesday and perhaps Thursday morning as well, uh, and maybe some patchy uh, light frost to go with that in those colder locations. The ridge moves closer, but we still are under a bit of a northwesterly flow at 18Z on Thursday, but as the ridge gets here, we should see improving conditions, but we've also got uh, some embedded um, little short waves, and so those are going to be responsible for helping to uh, enhance and develop a surface low in the vicinity of the Texas Panhandle, so we should see some clouds increasing on Thursday. A little bit of difference here with the European. The European much more aggressive with the precipitation than the GFS is, at least initially. The GFS, uh, as we move out to Friday, uh, shows the surface low uh, in the vicinity of Beaumont, Port Arthur area, with a warm front along the Gulf Coast area, so uh, clouds and perhaps some overrunning rain are a possibility for us. But the European is uh, kind of hard to say whether it's more aggressive or less aggressive here, but certainly showing maybe a little wider coverage. Uh, the position not terribly different, but the low certainly further south and uh, not exactly um, as strong as what the GFS was suggesting. By Saturday, uh, the the uh, low is uh, developing pretty well, and that brings the surface low across uh, South Georgia. So it looks like by late in the day on Saturday, we should see improving weather, and even the, the European suggests that that is probably true. Again, some differences in the uh, intensity of the rains. Now, moving out into voodoo country, whoa, look at this. We end up with a tremendous trough over... Uh, and along the East Coast with tremendous northwesterly flow across uh, the middle section of the country, and that puts us into the deep freeze. This would, If this materializes, we're looking at a pretty substantial uh, cool down with uh, some pretty good freezing temperatures and well below freezing, if this is indeed correct. We do warm up nicely by the 1st of April, however, uh, but we see some short waves embedded in that flow, which means that we could also be turning uh, wetter as we get into the end of March and the 1st of April. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for today. I expect James Spann to be back with the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, I hope that your Sunday is a good one and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of Central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham. <laughs>